I think people need to realize we don't put a lot of importance on calling it a hate crime when we have a murder. The police did not want to say that at the time. The mayor didn't want to say that at the time. I was the first person to admit that's what it was. And let's put a picture on it and the name for what it really is. It was a hate crime. Rachel Lyon isn't among the most renowned documentary filmmakers of our time, but she's certainly among the more prolific. Lyon has produced 65 documentaries, most of them for television since the early 80s. Her latest is Hate Crimes in the Heartland, which probes the connections between two grisly episodes in the history of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Let's see pieces of the film and talk with Rachel from her home and studio in Wilder, Kentucky, about the social motives behind her work. Breaking news out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Two arrests this morning in what they're calling Operation Random Shooter. A pair of white men now charged with driving around this city, shooting black people on the streets. Five victims, three of them dead. It just reminded me of the destruction that we saw uh, 91 years earlier. And it just reinforced the fact that race is still a critical issue, if not the predominant issue, when it comes to relations between blacks and whites in a place like Tulsa, Oklahoma. I initially got involved in film uh, because of a passion for and love for women's issues and uh, certainly the rights of women and children uh, came to the fore. I feel that social justice issues and uh, key human rights issues have been linked with, um, with, with Jewish, uh, secular Jewish interests for, forever. When the two young men uh, went through the Tulsa black neighborhood a, a year and a half ago and they killed three blacks and injured five and I realized this is a bookend. This is a present story that reflects past tensions. You saw this big kumbaya from city leaders and the NAACP and everybody's best friends but at the end of the day they were like can we trust you? There has been a real evolution for me. I began doing films that especially always had a narrator. This film does not have a narrator. This film is told by the people in the film. It is told by survivors. It is told by people who have a stake in what's going on. And I found that telling the story in this way is even harder because you're depending on these people to make the transitions, to get us to leap from one cornerstone point to another. We are looking at the story of both hatred and hope in our country. We are looking at what is it going to take to heal the wounds. So this is not what I would call a direct advocacy film. We are advocating for a, um, a more direct dialogue between blacks and whites, between Jews and Muslims, between gays and straights, we are asking for the hopefulness in our nature to be uh, sparked.